Hello, I'm Vicki Addison, and welcome to your weekly news video for the week of November 28th to December 5th. Here are a few of your top news stories. Katie Cares received a financial boost for its planned respite home to be located east of Boundary Trails Health Center. On Wednesday, Crocus Real Estate in Winkler presented a check for $10,000 and a commitment for another $40,000 for the project. The donation from Crocus brings the total raise so far to around $100,000. About $500,000 is needed before shovels can go into the ground. Meanwhile, going forward, Ruth Reimer of Katie Care says the respite home will now be known as Katie's Cottage. A trio of scenarios have been developed on how to implement a Ukrainian language program at Shevchenko School in Vita. This follows a series of discussions between Borderland School Division officials with Manitoba Education and others around the province in an effort to gain context on Ukrainian language programming in Manitoba. Superintendent Krista Curry says these options were put together in partnership with the local group requesting the classes and have been presented to the board for consideration. Curry adds 55 students would possibly enroll in the class ranging from grades 4 to 12. A decision on the program is expected in time for the 2015-2016 budget formulations. The private member's bill introduced Tuesday by Morden Winkler MLA Cameron Friesen aimed at improving school zone safety past second reading Thursday. The legislature voted unanimously in favor of supporting the bill, allowing it to proceed to the committee stage. The legislation comes about a year after Karina Denisenko was struck and killed by a vehicle in October 2013 on PR 428 next to Winkler's Northlands Parkway Collegiate shortly after the new school opened. Friesen asserts not all the proper pedestrian safety measures were in place prior to the school opening and this legislation would change that. It would make a traffic safety analysis a mandatory part of the new school planning process. The analysis would require the assessment and implementation of necessary traffic control measures before a new school could open. No date has been set for the committee hearings. Major renovations to the Carmen Memorial Hall continue to be plagued by delays. The project was expected to be finished by March 2015, but a number of unanticipated issues have arisen that will likely push completion of the work into next summer. Engineers have run into a variety of challenges that were unforeseen as they attempted to renovate the historic building. In one particular instance, workers discovered a room located underneath the heating and air conditioning unit outside. Mitchell says they had to pour several piers into that space in order to support the fire escape that would be located overhead. Mitchell admits there will likely be some added costs because of the extra work that's needed, but he says some of that was built into their budget. Canadian Mennonite University officially opened Marpet Commons on the weekend in Winnipeg. Marpet Commons is CMU's new library and learning commons and includes a bridge that connects the school campus by providing students and faculty with a safe way to cross Grant Avenue. Construction on the project began in July 2013 and was funded by the Connect fundraising campaign under the leadership of campaign chair Elmer Hildebrand, CEO of Golden West Broadcasting. Hildebrand says fundraising efforts have been intense over the past two and a half years, and to date, $13 million has been committed towards the campaign's $14.4 million goal. A climatologist with Environment Canada says this winter should not be a repeat of last year. David Phillips says last year's polar vortex left its mark on southern Manitoba from Halloween until Easter. He's expecting this winter in southern Manitoba will have above average temperatures and below normal precipitation. Phillips says we should hit normal highs of minus 7 degrees by the weekend. And those were a few of your top news stories for the week of November 28th to December 5th. For PeminaValleyOnline.com, I'm Vicki Addison. Thanks for watching.